we're back on. Okay, here's the uh, cold chisel. Locks up the tab. It's a custom tab. They split that thing for some reason. I'll be taking it apart to make it right. And this one had two tabs. Oh, he put all three tabs down. Mm. Uh oh. Didn't want it falling apart. Obviously. When it wouldn't run. What if you tighten the nut down? Well, why would you have to bother with all those tabs? That's correct, yeah. yeah makes sense. <clears throat> oh, it is tight. Oh, Fingers are tight, anyways. Leverage. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, that's, I'm sure there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, tighten to take off. Actually, a little torque on it. Plus. Okay, was that the problem? Nope. Nope, oh, still doesn't rotate. Okay, which one of these they put in? Okay, they put the one that leaks in here. See, there's no way of sealing that one up because it's got that lock tab in there. All right. So that ain't gonna work. Now where is the set screw? Oh, I didn't use a set screw because I got the snap ring style. Okay. See the correct shaft has a set screw that goes over here that locks the shaft. They use the late style shaft that takes snap ring right there. That's how they do it. <clears throat> you put a punch right through here and it knocks it all the way through. That holes in there for. So we have an O ring in there. You can feel the grip. See all the little scratches? Mm -hmm. They got grit or dirt or something inside of there. Nice and free on that side. So we're going to have to polish this shaft a little bit and run a hone to here just slightly to knock off these high spots. Get this to work correctly again. You know, just doing this here, it's burnishing them in right now. I'll just do that a few hundred times and do the same thing. All right. <coughs> so that's not the right one of those. Obviously it'll work, but it's just not the right one. Appears to be tight on those. That's good. <clears throat> when these things are loose, everything moves all over the place, it doesn't work right. Okay. Still can't feel any in play. <clears throat> They tighten stuff. That's something. They did that right. Okay, now these get jammed in there, so you have to just tap free a little bit. See how the wet, see how the thread gets wedged in. Mm -hmm. So you have to rotate the opposite direction a little bit, and it slides off.
You sure that wouldn't have leaked in there? Nah. There's just a little excess on the O-ring. It needs to be trimmed. Yeah, well, it's, it's, <clears throat> it's flat now. So my guess is this tranny was going to leak. So this O-ring is uh, in need of repair. Now we'll just, just replace it. I'm trying to fix it. We're not going to repair it? No. Get a little glue in there. So. We can't glue that back together and make it work again? Yeah, if we had to, we probably could, but we're not going <clears> to. <throat> Humpty Dumpty broke. Okay. Okay, now there's a washer up in here we got to get out of here once you pull this out. Oh, that's tight. What the hell do they do? Do they polish that with some dirty grit sandpaper? Look at those teeth marks in it. Dumbasses. You know what they did, don't you? Okay. It's the wrong shaft. Oh, is that right? It's a 77 later shaft on an early training. Okay, there's a thrust washer right here. We gotta get that out. It just drops out. Flip it over. Washer comes out. That one was not supposed to come out. Oh, dumb asses. What a bunch of morons. Okay. Okay, uh, these are not the correct parts that are supposed to be in here. Hmm. Well, they have them laying around. Probably didn't want to look like they had extra parts. So. There was supposed to be one big thrust wash that goes in here. So this is the wash that goes in the loose bearing cluster. This is third gear. It goes over here. <laughs> which is probably an extra one because they probably put a new one in there. So, yeah, that is custom. Now the next problem is, is that this is a 65 tranny. Mm -hmm. Now is this a late 77, early? Now this is just a one, six month only tranny. Cause see this is a, uh, got Torrington bearings in here, does not have needle bearings. See it's caged. Mm -hmm. This tranny should have loose needle bearings in it if it's the correct one. So I think what they did is they're mixing cage bearings and loose bearing stuff and they don't mix. Mm. There's about five or six thousand difference in diameters, mm -hmm. which is probably why this didn't fit. Mm. But everything is different. The bushings are different. The holes in the case are a few thousand different, so you're not supposed to mix and match. But obviously somebody decided that they could do it. So, because it wasn't for their bike. No. Is this an early cluster gear that they just beat the bushings in there? Or is this actually a late cluster gear? That is what we don't know right now. And I'm not sure how you would tell them apart because they don't usually match up. Now, if you wipe the grease off and you look at it, it looks like somebody beat in it. Does that look like Loctite to you? Or is it just some kind of elephant snout they put in there? See that? See how it looks green? Yeah. Does that resemble sleeve retainer Loctite? Hmm. Keeps it from falling out. This stuff right here. So my guess is that this is the correct cluster gear for the tranny, but they put the late bearings in there that do not fit in here. They're probably loose, so they lock tie them in there. So is this the correct gear on here, and this is wrong? Let's say one was fine, one was coarse. This looks like the correct gear. I have to count the teeth. There's a fine tooth gear that went in '68 for the one-to-one -one speedo. And this is a two to one speedo, which has a different gear set. So, does that look like 24 teeth to you? I'm thinking not. Yeah. I think they're 24 teeth. I don't remember. Anyway, either way, this is bad. We have to get the correct drive unit. So, I'll have to count this to see if it's correct. So, we got to figure out what gear set this is. Now, that is not supposed to be that tight. Hmm. I'm guessing there's something wrong right there. Yeah, there. It, it'll break in. Yeah. Or it'll break. One or two. I think it'll break before it breaks in. So I'm thinking this is the reason why it wasn't spinning very good. 
there might be a lack of free play. This is going to be fun. I'm not even going to try to save this clip because it's going to take us some abuse to get it out of here, I'm sure. Yeah. Sorry, I'm going to take some abuse to get it out. Closer to you on this stuff. Yeah, Close enough? It's a lot bigger on the screen when you watch it. Yeah, I remember it. you telling me that, so. Yeah. Don't use the. Uh, yeah. Well, you can stand back about six inches, probably. Don't yeah. be crowding you? It'd be a better view. Yeah. Well, I haven't elbowed you yet, so you're not too close for me. Yeah. If you find yourself getting hit by flying debris or my elbow, you're probably too close. Fighting a good fight? I don't know how good. I'm fighting it though. It's definitely uh, not happy with me. Trying to get to soak up in the air a little bit. I'm going to just tear up my two shoes out of what I'm doing. Say a whole new gear set, I don't have to worry about it. under it somehow. Yeah. Well, if you take a torch to it and heat it up and you bend it, it'll stay bent and that'll take care of it too. I might have to do that to get it out because it's not coming right now. If I pry it out all the way around, it might come out. tricks I can use. Uh, let's see here. Is this big enough to go around that thing? Not really. I feel like taking that one off the thing. Alright. We'll get a different one. Alright, let's try it over here. Ah, that one's big enough, isn't it? Scooby. Hey, pop up. I was wondering if it was going to come out for the rain. What are you doing, Scooby? Scooby. You having fun over there? He's not happy. Who's watching the door? You're over here. He's not happy about that rain. What you don't doing? like rain, huh? No, he don't like rain. Mm. Is he shaking? Oh, yeah, he's shaking. Yeah, that's a good boy. Yeah, come on, you over there. He's going to start stinking pretty soon. You're already shaking. 
Yeah, look at the look at that shaking going on. Are you are you afraid of that rainstorm out there? how you're supposed to do it. supposed to come out but it did okay so what is so tight about this thing sometimes it's just the bushings that one rotates it's not the bushing Definitely an in-play issue, though. Yeah. So it's definitely a height issue. You know, is the gear too tall, or the bushing too tall, or are they both too tall? Whatever it is, there is not room for the clip for the washer in here along with a snap ring so to make it work is you have to go and grind the back side of the gear off a little bit and the bushing a little bit until they you have a little bit of in play you're mm. supposed to have some in play I see. <clears throat> so whatever the problem is there just something's not made correctly mm -hmm. and so you just have to make it fit they didn't do they didn't make it fit correctly jamming it together is not the, is not the fix it made it look good going out the door but it yeah, they didn't make it very far. Hang some chrome on, it's done. There was some chrome on it. Yeah, it was finished then. Yeah, good to go. Right, so the thrust washer is obviously wrong. Over there. <clears throat> Got a low gear. It's free. So that was not a problem. So it was only the second gear was the problem. And the dog works good. So is there any manufacturing mark? Oh, that's the problem. It's made by Andrews. So why does it have the wrong stuff in here? Anyway, these bushings, these bearings need to come out of here. If there's a snap ring groove on the inside of the gear for a snap ring, then it's the early cluster. If it doesn't have that on the inside, it's not. Now these bearings will come out once we heat this thing up to about 350 degrees. If these bearings are loose, they'll just fall right out. So we'll have to heat them up because right now it's not 350 degrees here right now. It's 50 degrees, but not 350. Mm. <clears throat> so we'll have to get those out and see if that's the problem. This nice new shaft is junk. We're not using it anymore. Now, these bushings are made for different diameters. See how they're really loose? Mm -hmm. That's because I cut the shaft down. <coughs> now, see, that's missing alignment there, see? Mm -hmm. See, that bearing's tight. See, that's how the shaft is not. The shaft's a little bit fat right in that one spot, see? So it doesn't want to go together there. And then once you get into where the other bearing goes here, 
even though the bearing's loose on the shaft, the bearings being glued in are not glued concentric. Right. So the shaft is tight when you go in there. And that's why I couldn't get any free play. And that's pretty tight on its own. That's not quite the clearance you're supposed to run on these things. So all that stuff is uh, in need of some help. And I don't know why we didn't have the correct washer, but see this is the correct washer for the early gear mm -hmm. on the inside. So I'm assuming they bought the correct gear set, but who knows. <coughs> you don't know what they were thinking. Now, it looks like they got a humongous oversized drain plug stuffed in there. Mm -hmm. And I would appear that that's a big ass drain plug sitting there. It's not supposed to be that big, so I wonder what else is going on in that. That is a 5 a drain plug. This is a timing hole plug. And it's supposed to be a half inch thread. And that's not even a timing hole plug, that's just a big bolt they stuck in there. So that is not correct. And that cannot really be fixed very easily. It has to be all welded up and redone. Weld up solid and start over to fix that correctly. Go back to the stock diameter plug. All right. Now this appears to be okay. This I can't tell if it's working or not, or what they did in here. <clears throat> now we can leave it. I hope they did it correctly. We'll we'll take it apart and double check it like we did everything else. Take it apart and make sure it's good? Yeah. That's probably a better call. Because if they MacGyvered the rest of this stuff... You've read this book before? <laughs> <laughs> You're thinking there might be some more hidden stuff on the inside? Yeah, you just have no confidence in other people's work, do you? So I'm thinking the guy that did the motor did the tranny. What do you think? I'm thinking you're probably right. Yeah. Should you call the guy up that I got it from? This is the important piece to make sure you put on the end of the shaft here. So when this pushes against it, it doesn't screw up into the shaft. Uh -huh. Somebody asked me where that came from. That is an OTC. See a number? Yeah. And this is OTC too. I paid a lot of money for this 40 years ago. And I'm still beating it up. Actually, it's probably about 35 years ago I bought it. It cost a lot of money back then, though. I remember that. And after I screwed up my first shaft, I went and got this piece. <laughs> I think I screwed up a pinion shaft on, a, on the motor, though, not a training. Okay, now this is going to pull off our kicker gear. Right tool for the job. Well, I'm sure there's a factory tool for doing that, but that's the one I use. It appears to work fairly good. Okay, that is used, but still good. The ball bearing's gone, it goes in the gear. Here, not gear, bearing. Is this any good? Oh, this actually does feel like it might work. Good. So this is supposed to have a ball bearing that goes right in here. And when it goes on over the gear, this piece here would stay with the shaft because this is part of the shaft. Mm -hmm. So this would turn like that with the tranny and this stays hooked around our fork right here. 
down right. here. The fork goes right in through here. Yeah. So that keeps that from rotating. So that's how it works. So this is held by the, this, and this is held by this. Now, when you don't have the ball bearing in here, then this thing's free to spin in here. It's not gonna work like it should. This doesn't quite work quite right. It'll start chewing itself up in here, and because that's not supposed to be a bearing area right here. Right, right, right. So, so this gear here is bad because of that. It's also worn, but it's not worn real bad. But the bearing got destroyed somehow, so it doesn't work. Now these bearings here, when these things aren't made right, these won't rotate with the squat. Now you, the way you test them is you push them on the inside and push down, and it should work freely. This one does. So it's a better reproduction at least. It's working better. Okay, there's that. Now, now we got all that stuff off. You can see the fit of this on here. That appears to be a little snug. Works perfect. It's just right. Uh, how do they get that finish? Did they brush it? Or did they hold it? Looks honed. Yeah, it feels straight. So I don't think they used the ball brush. Eh, back and forth like that. Even though over here they did. Is that got a bevel to it? Yeah, that's probably what they did. See how loose it is on the tip? Mm-hmm. And once you're in there, see how it gets tight? So, you can see how it looks a little tapered here in the front? Yeah. So they're going back and forth like this mm. with a dingleberry. Or they had one of those little flex homes if they're... Yeah, they, yeah. If they make one that small, I don't know if they do. My guess it might have been a flex home, not a dingleberry, but it could have been a dingleberry. Yeah, it's probably loose on that side too, I bet. Yeah, it's pretty tight rough to get going on that side. So if I put on my hone, you would definitely see it's not very round, I bet. So, we'll see. It appears they put this nut on upside down. Probably for a good reason. Uh, I'm not we sure. We just don't know what the reason would be. Yeah, I'm not You'd sure. You'd probably have to been there. I would have had to been there, that's right. I'm sure there's a reason why they stuck on upside down. And then they could explain it to you. I'm sure there's a good excuse for that. Well, that nut has a bevel on the top. They do that for clearance on the gears. That way none of this stuff will hit it. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that's why they do that. And obviously, that wasn't done. Thread on this one. Oh, it's bevel cut. Yeah, it looks a lot better if you put it in like oh. that. Think they're tight? I need a new driver. Damn. Mm. Well, at least you got them tight. Well, if the transmission wasn't going to work, at least it wasn't going to fall apart, huh? Well, it would have fallen apart, but for a different reason. It had big holes in the bottom of the tube. Yeah. It wasn't it was loose, that's for sure. They at least did that part correctly.
Now this is supposed to drip oil on top of the throw up, right? Correct and good. All right, looks like a fancy bearing in there. No, I'm gonna get this out somehow. Turn away? Yeah. That's one option. Or you hold the high gear with your fingers. That was kind of easy. The bearing fell out. Okay, now you put the bearing underneath the lip so it won't come out. It doesn't hit very good. Okay, see so we got the gear over here moving a little bit now. Mm -hmm. So we can almost get to the snap ring in there now. I think I'll do this one more time. Now you come back with it. So I'm pushing, I'm yeah. squeezing it with my hand. I get it. So I catch the edge. See how it came out with it that time? Okay. Now, so now I got access to the gear, the snap right now. At least a little bit of it. Now I'm not going to try to save it either. washer in there or not? Looks like. Yep, there's a there's something there really thin. Is that broken? No, it's just flopping all over the place. Okay. Okay, there is the edge of it. Curious doesn't want to force, it wants to slip and slide. I did. I don't try to save those. They're too hard to get in and out. Okay, now once that's all the way off, now you hold on the third gear. And it goes in that far. And some of the gears are smaller than the races, some are bigger. The earlier trainings it's bigger and you can't knock it out. This one, but this one you can. out that race right there. Mm -hmm. You must have aimed it for that, not that. Mm -hmm. Okay, see how they had this on AP4? Mm -hmm. So that's the correct way of doing it. It's toward fourth gear. See this side has no marking on it. Mm -hmm. So they did have it installed correctly. That is defective. 
Someone heavenized it. I don't know who that was. See, there's the brand new washer that they took out the old one that was over here. Got another purpose for the old one. Yeah, now they make these in different thicknesses too. This appears to be uh, Andrews. Mm -hmm. And this is a 1.23 ratio. That's what it says right there. Mm -hmm. So that way you know what the ratio third gear it is. Okay, now this is our gear here. She has loose needle bearings in it. Mm -hmm. It's also very tight. Didn't want to come out. Shouldn't be that hard to get in and out. Maybe they stuck an extra bearing in there for good measure. Maybe. They did have the washer on there. That's good. It doesn't look like they screwed that up at least. Is that right I got? Bearing area looks good. It almost looks like it's burnished right here on the edge, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Kind of blue. That's your sealing surface right there. That's what seals your four speed train. That little lip right there? Mm. That's what seals it. That's why they leak sometimes. This is definitely a loose bearing tranny. This has that lock tab in there I don't like using. I use a transmission race out of the later tranny and I eliminate this stupid thing here. No chance of leakage. Well, if you had the seal style nut on it, on the outside surface, how is this going to seal it? Yeah, it's not. There's a big escape groove right here to let the oil out. Yeah. So you can't use it. Now that what that does, that locks this race into the gear. Right. So when this is rotating, that rotates. Well, the thing is, if it's tight, it rotates also. If it's loose, it's going to leak anyway. So who gives a shit if it doesn't rotate? So that's the difference. Now the the 77 to 79 spacer is identical spacer, except it doesn't have that groove in it. Mm. So if you put that seal nut on the outside, it'll actually encapsulate it and seal it. It doesn't work unless you do it that way. Okay, so we know now for a fact this is the early training case because it has all of these things right here in there. Which it should be. For the 67 bike, yes. Yeah. I'm going to put these over here. So I don't know what the fitment of these is good or bad. That's a whole other issue. But they are in there at least. So we do know that this is not a loose needle bearing bearing kit. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming this, uh, they bought a whole gear set because this is the correct loose bearing gear because the later gear, this is cut all the way across the whole face and it does not have this washer in it. Mm. So this is the early gear. I'm assuming it was a whole kit they bought. So this should be the correct one, but we have to get these bearings out and hopefully they didn't screw up the shaft. Seeing how it's all locked tied together, I doubt if they hurt the shaft or the gear any. We just got to get the, all the Loctite out that's in there. Mm. So we have to melt it out, wipe it out, obviously get these bearings out of here. And I should be able to put the snap rings and the little thrust washers in there. These ones here that are supposed to be in there. And we put on loose needle bearings in like we're supposed to. Mm -hmm. And get a new shaft because that shaft is junk. Mm -hmm. And my uh, guess is these might be not the right ones, but we'll have to see if these are the right bushings. They might be the correct one. And it doesn't look like they're chewed up, so they might be usable. So the gear set's good. The only problem was we had the second gear was locked up on the counter shaft for some reason. Something wasn't machined right from the factory, but we just had to make it work. And then luckily they had that problem with we all these other issues were in here. And I couldn't slide the cluster gear because of the, you know, the bearing and fitment of the shaft was all bogus. So that was the other problem. So when I get that out of there, I just hit it with a big punch and knock it through, but I don't see a big punch right now. You can use this one right here as long as you don't hit the case. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Something like this, mass matters, so get the big bearing. I need the big, get the big parts. I'm going around the circle of the seal. 
I'm going to get the seal to come out. See how the seal's not coming? Mm -hmm. That means I'm not hitting hard enough yet. Cocked. That's why it felt like it was coming out that side. Now, when you're hitting this, make sure you don't hit over here. Yeah, that's kind of important. And when this goes through, make sure you don't hit right there. Yeah, that's very good. Okay. Now, put that back over there. Let's see what they did here. Hopefully they didn't use a dingleberry to fit this piece. See, it's a nice, bright, shiny surface. Yeah. That's not a dingleberry. That looks like it's as machined from the factory. They didn't hone it at all. It's pretty polished, so I'm not sure. So we have to check that. To USA part, it's gems because it's got the flags all over it. And should just there's gems right there. Mm -hmm. So they didn't cheap put cheap parts in it. So this is the crappy seal, not the double thick one that they have. Right. It's a shitty one. And they left out the cork that goes in here. Comes up and hits against the cork <laughs> to seal it. Huh? So that seals the outside of the seal. Right. So if your case has stuff like this going on in here, uh -huh. it won't leak past. It. So this is not the good seal. So the good seal looks like this over here. I'm down to my last few hundred of these things. So, it's a double wall seal. That's what's supposed to be in there. So having a second interior in here gives you more pressure, holds it in even tighter. Mm. And like I said, then you have the cork that goes in here and it seals against the whole back side and that'll keep it from leaking on the outside of the seal. Good. So for some reason they didn't use that. Now the only problem you run into on these is if, if this is too big in diameter, it won't fit inside of the cork. But this one looks like it's plenty small enough to fit. All right, and this looks like this was a brand new part too. So I'm still gonna put another part because I want to get rid of that right. one with that. Give it. Yep. So that's no good. So now, you're gonna weld up the bottom or just run that? Okay. Now this is an Andrews gear. Now most of the Andrews gears now they got an O-ring that goes in here. <clears throat> this one looks like it is not the one that has the o-ring in it That's to help to stop the oil leak mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, So these are the new Andrews ones Groovy. So it's cut deeper. And she just cut a deeper groove on this one? Uh, it's a tea treat, so it's hard to do. Okay. We can attempt to do that, or we can just buy a, another gear. Okay. Or just put it together and hope it doesn't leak. There's lots of repairs and fancy tricks you can do on these things. Putting that gear in there is the best one. The other thing they do, they do a... Uh, they cut out this corner right here and they put an O-ring right here on the edge. Mm -hmm. Which does absolutely nothing. Because then the nut's not tight. Because this here has to tighten down against this shoulder for everything to be tight. This nut. Mm -hmm. If you got a piece of rubber in here, how are you going to tighten yeah. this nut down? Yeah. So it's just going to leak like a sieve and the sprocket's going to be loose. Right. That's stupid. Uh, another guy, he was putting the O-ring a little bit further in here. 
but what are you going to sit on? There's these aren't machined for right. a seal. So what's that going to do? That's kind of at best that's marginal. Yeah. But at least it'll tighten up a little bit, but mm -hmm. not very much because it's going to just collapse. It's just going to crush this here tightly if you tighten sure. that nut down like you're supposed to. So that doesn't, one doesn't work. The latest one I just saw, some guy sent me a link for. They had a nut that went on here that had a, a secondary seal in the nut. Mm -hmm. No, how'd they do that? What'd they do? It was something different. Um, oh, the nut itself was a seal. Mm -hmm. They had a real tall collar nut, and they had a seal inside of that. So the nut and everything went on it. Or was that a bearing? No, that was a bearing. That's a different system. Okay, the ones I use, I have the nut and has a seal in it. That works okay. Yeah. The problem you run across is is that the bushing right here is only so tight, and as it wears, it starts rocking back and forth, which lets this seal go up and go up and like that, and mm -hmm. this lets the oil come out. So what they were doing is they took the nut and they had a big bearing that stuck in the end of the nut. So instead of having that inner primary with a bearing in it, like for the newer bike, 70 and up. They had it in the nuts, you can have an open primary and still have support. Mm. But what that really did, it kept this gear from rocking in here, which helps quite a bit. The only problem is I don't even work on late bikes with no inner primary. So, so the easiest thing to do is buy the Andrews gear right here that has the O-ring groove in it and, and then keep your bushing good and put good oil in it, you should be fine. Okay, now the other problem is they ran into See how the seal's in here really deep? Mm -hmm. Notice how it's all jammed into the bushing? Yeah. So that seal doesn't work. Because the seal lip is jammed into the bushing. It's, it's basically it's mashed into the gear. Mm -hmm. So that's no good. So they had the sheared off counter shaft of seal here, and then they got this one screwed up here. So this, thing, leak. So this thing was going to leak. I guarantee it, it was going to leak. It will leak right from the get-go. So there's no stopping. Now being a 65 bike, there's no room to put a, a nut seal on this thing. We have to make the stock stuff work. So if we put this in there, that should stop the leakage that would seep past here. So, and that should give you a pretty oil tight training. And we'll go ahead and seal all this stuff up here correctly like they were supposed to, which mm -hmm. they didn't do. So we'll have to see if uh, he wants to do an upgrade. Yeah. But. Uh, all right, so that's what all that looks like. Now, over here, this last of the stuff is right here. This bearing feels pretty good. Is this an American-made bearing or an uh, import? It says right on China, big mm -hmm. print. So, some of these bearings lift, some of them don't. This one feels okay for now, but we never know how it is. Okay, now we got to get this off of the shaft here. It was on there pretty tight, as we could tell. Okay, so let's go over the press, and we'll do that quickly. We just have to have the setup line right over here that I left here. That's close enough for that. That should just make it. See why you have a box with an inner tube on the yeah. inner press? Guess why I have all that crap down there. Because <laughs> you've banged up too many parts. Not catching them, huh? No damage. Oh, okay. good. Okay, this one comes right off of that. Hey, scoop. Okay, that slid right off like it's supposed to. Now, this does not say Andrews all over it like you would think it would. This should say AP all over it, and it does not. So this might not be an Andrews gear. See, AP is proud of their products. See, everything's marked. Right, right, right. This one here is no... Generic? No, uh, no markings on it. See how this is all the nice ground tooth? See how my fingernail's not catching anything? Mm. This one here is a... You hear it? Yeah. 
it's ground, but it's not ground as smooth. Yeah, I don't know who this. I don't think this is the same. I don't think this is Andrews, <coughs> which doesn't really matter as long as it works. I don't. Andrews isn't the only people in the world that make parts that actually do work. They just tend to make most of them that do work. But that could be one reason why the second gear didn't match up. It was a yeah. different vendor and they didn't make it to spec. This one here is not Andrews either. It doesn't say anything about being Andrews on it. <clears throat> so. No, this is Andrews. Okay, so that was this is a little second cluster. This is on the main shaft. This is counter shaft. Yeah, so I'm thinking this low gear set here is somebody else. I don't know what ratio this is. We have to count the teeth and see what it is. I don't know if it's stock ratio or FX ratio. Because yes, stock is a 310 low, the FX is 260 low, and the stroker racing one is 244 low. So there's three different ones there. There's two different third gear ratios, which is a cluster. It's third because this is third gear. And that one we saw was marked on it with uh, one, one two, three. Yeah, which is, uh, I think that's the stock Harley ratio. Where's the third gear? Yeah, one, two, three. I'm pretty sure it's stock FL ratio. What that does, it puts third gear right next to fourth. So it's like having a five speed tranny when you're going from fourth to fifth. It's mm -hmm. real close together. But the second to third is real far apart. So, because when they put it close to high, they take it away from second. Mm. So the two, three upshift's a big upshift. So it works good if you're on the free. You need to go just down one gear to go up a hill or something. But going through your transmission, it's wider ratio from. If you have a three ten low, you got a real big gap from low to second. There's another big jump from second to third, and three four real close. If you put a close ratio training in it, you put the FX low gear, which is two sixty. It's a little bit harder getting off the line, but it. It's real close to second, and then you bring third gear toward the middle, so it's two, three, and three, four are about equal steps. So it makes a nice even step. It's not as smooth as a five speed, but it's, at least it's equal. So it accelerates quicker than that, just a, a stock FL training. So this one I think is a stock FL gearing, probably. I have to count the teeth to see what they are. But <clears throat> anyway, there's, there's options out there, is all that means, depending on what you're after. <clears throat> this here usually has Andrews all over it through here. This one does not say Andrews on it. What's it say down here? I've never seen something. Yeah, there's something down there. Yeah, the aftermarket doesn't usually mark them down here, so. A part number on it, just a part number. Wasn't there something before the part number? Was this A? Is that AP? Uh, not that I can read. Use your little magnifying glass. Yeah, don't matter. It is what it is. It's part of the transmission. I have one over here to tell real quick. <clears throat> Here's one right here. Imagine that. Get all these parts laying around here. Mm. Maybe I'm doing another training. Mm. And this one is 70 to 85. So this is a cow pie training. I mean, not cow pie, though. Oh, shit. Cone, cone motor. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. There's an Andrews. Same markings. So they used to put it over in here, back in the old days. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, you line it's up the right exactly side. the same, except it's shorter. It's almost identical, but different. Yeah, <laughs> imagine that. <clears throat> so this is the uh, 65 tranny, so 70 tranny. And then the, uh, the other tranny would be down here. Next step down. Hmm. There's three quarters difference between the short and the long. This is in the middle. I think these are seven sixteenths longer than the short one. I see. As I remember. 
That could be wrong though. All right, so he does have the uh, Andrews shaft in it, but some of those other gears I don't think are you know, they're Andrews. All right, so I got to go hold a customer and see what they want to upgrade. Obviously, there's some issues with the uh, counter shaft side, so we'll have to deal with it, I guess. Yep. And this here, we didn't check the fit on that bush in there yet, but I think it was halfway decent. And it's not rocking up and down, so I think that part's probably decent. That had to be an accident, of course. And I do feel drag in it, so I think there's a seal in it. It's not too tight. See how it's got drag on it? So that means there's an O-ring in there that's actually working. Mm -hmm. So I think we're all right on this part. Mm -hmm. We might have to tighten that up to a sluice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to put the string back on and everything else, too. Right, I'm going to go check the strain plug and see if that's oversized, because it's very possible that that is an oversized part. And that thing's going to have to be welded up, you're saying? Well, we can even leave it. I'm not sure how good it's going to seal, but you know, that's why you put strut sealer on them. Mm -hmm. The other problem is this bolt gets too deep and they break the top of the case out up in there. If you put too long of a bolt in there, <coughs> that's a good thing. It blisters the case up right in here and it's got a crack in it and it leaks. Is there a crack in that one? No, it looks good. Oh, good. So that's another one of the famous trends that nobody can find. Mm -hmm. The other one is the studs uh, leak down through the studs. That's why you should GP weld the tops of the studs and slow down the air. It leaks a little bit. It's all a bunch of little tricks you do. All right, so I need to find a drain plug. Not a drain plug, a filler plug. And of course, I think this has been modified too, so yeah, that's too small. More butchered stuff. Happens a lot. People do what they got to do to keep around to buy another part. tools for doing that. Somebody want to remember what that was. It is snap-on number A15. Official. Official. Beat on the big hammer. Where'd my hammer go? My little hammer. It's right over. It's one handle. Where's the other handle? Mm -hmm. I couldn't see the rest of it on the other one. This way I'll hold on to it? No. Okay. Bigger hammer. I don't think it wants to come. There it goes. There we go. I'm thinking it's got something in the hole. Jeez, I'm thinking that hole is screwed up. Hmm. I, I turned screwed it and it hasn't moved yet. It's not a good sign. Not a good sign. I'm thinking this is not going to be a good cover to use for experimental looking at stuff. 
I'm running out of good parts around here. I keep coming up with all this good custom stuff. That's not a good sign. Okay, one more time. More good chrome covers. I like these things. These are nice. You think this one's going to come apart any better? I don't think it's going to come apart. Damn. I give up. Oh, yeah. I think everyone who covered is screwed up. I'm going to get a new plug. You do. Scooby's going to tell you. Scooby's going to follow me? You like me? You like me, Scooby? See, I know you don't like chrome, that's why I was looking for a uh, non-chrome one. Mm -hmm. I have a whole bunch of these, so... Ooh, wore them sweat. out? Yeah, I wore them out. He did. Quite a walk. Yeah, he don't like that ring. He hyperventilates from the ring. Mm -hmm. This plastic is pretty good shit. I was to give you a stupid O-ring, which I don't understand how that works either. <laughs> Why is putting an O-ring going to help you when it just makes the plug loose? Well, these ones they actually cut out for it. Look at that. Look at that. They actually, purpose for it. They actually make room under there for it. You do. Okay, where's yeah. the good cover up? Yeah, oh. oh, look at that. It looks like a stock size cover. Perfect. All right, life is good. That's one thing that doesn't have to be fixed. Oh, that'll go all the way down. Right. So you just have an O-ring in there. there. When you put an O-ring in there where it's not made for it, yeah. it doesn't it do it. It just squishes out. It just squishes and the plug is going to come out whenever it wants to. Why are you taking that? Well, it's chrome. You don't like chrome. You want to run it. Oh, you want to polish. <laughs> That's good enough. It's close enough for you? Close enough. Well, it's, it's an anti-leak thing, so. Perfect. It's an upgrade. All the better. We're going to upgrade? Okay. We'll put that in the upgrade pile. Okay. All right. Now we don't have to glue it in like these other ones are all yeah. glued in. Yeah. Those are custom. What's wrong, Scooby? What? Are you shaking over there for some reason? Good boy. All right. Uh, that's about it for now. I think we have enough uh, issues here to deal with. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Here I thought the motor was going to be good, and it wasn't. Training is supposed to be good. It's not. Hmm. It's cruising right along. Is the frame straight? You got that good. It's not that good? I said, no, we have that good, I think. Oh, we have that good? That's one good thing about the bike? You got that straightened out. Front end's done. Right, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to have to uh, get the stuff all cleaned up, figure out what we're going to keep. So, it looks like this transmission got blown up before. Make you say that. A big polish mark right there. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. These things don't get polished here unless they get hit by something. Gears. Usually that's what hits it, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not a place that gets machined normally. Yeah. It's not broken though, that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. Alright, that's it for now. We'll be back later. Yeah.